In the United Kingdom, the headlines don't look encouraging. A slowing economy, a cost of living crisis, massive strikes, a controversial immigration plan, and now they're talking about the real estate market. It's struggling. Demand is weak. Citizens don't have the money to spend on housing, but others are buying. The spotlight today is on who owns property in the UK. And we're talking about overseas entities. That's always been a mystery. Shell companies, shady foreign entities have poured money in the UK. They've made Britain the hub of illicit cash. So houses are being sold without any trace of the actual owner. How many companies are we talking about? More than 18,000 as per the latest estimate. 18,000 companies pouring black money into Britain's real estate market. How many properties do these anonymous investors own? More than 52,000. No sign of who the owners are for these properties. And here's the interesting part. Many of these belong to Russians, the Kremlin and people close to it. Sample this. The 52,000 properties have a combined worth of 6.7 billion pounds, out of which around 1.5 billion pounds was pumped by Russia. Mostly rich, influential businessmen believed to be close to President Vladimir Putin. They put all this money. And what does this tell you? Russian oligarchs continue to own lavish properties in Britain right under the government's nose. That's despite all the sanctions that London slapped on Moscow. And this trend is not new. Of Russians owning big properties in the UK, it's been happening for a while. Take the case of Roman Abramovich, a wealthy Russian businessman and former owner of the Chelsea Football Club. At one point, he owned property worth more than 250 million pounds, 250 million pounds, including 70 homes, buildings and pieces of land in the heart of England. Was London aware of this? Of course it was. Did it do something to tackle it? Not quite. Let's rewind a bit. Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022. The United Kingdom, under Boris Johnson, he was prime minister then, imposed sanctions. Sanctions on Russian oligarchs. It said the businessmen were responsible for funding Putin's invasion. In fact, let me quote what UK Foreign Secretary James Cleverly said last year. Putin continues to rely on his cabal of selected elite to maintain control of his industrial complex and fuel his illegal invasion of Ukraine. By targeting these individuals, we are ramping up the economic pressure on Putin and will continue to do so until Ukraine prevails. London introduced a law soon after Russia's invasion. It was called the Register of Overseas Entities. The idea was quite simple. Foreign companies that own property in the UK have to disclose details of who the owner is, and they have to disclose it publicly. And here's how it panned out. There are 32,000 foreign companies, as per the UK's records. They own more than 90,000 properties. Guess how many abided by this rule? Only 21,000. How many Russians made it to the list? Only four. Let's dig deeper. The registry required these companies to reveal the name of the actual person owning it. Instead, companies chose to exploit a loophole, one that allowed them to skirt the disclosure through trusts. 10,000 of them named a different trust as their owner. Around 2,000 said they don't even have an owner. And some companies did not even bother to file a reply. The purpose was clearly defeated. The UK's aim to find more Russian oligarchs who own property in, in England fell flat. The failure of this legislation was on full display, and since then, London has remained mum. It has remained silent on its failure to flush out illegal funds. Maybe this could make for a good documentary sometime in the future.